Hello and welcome back to Spin Your Jaw. Before we go into today's analysis, I feel like we just need to address a little tiny thing first. And that is um, my blocked nose. And I'm only mentioning it because I, I feel a bit rubbish and I need some sympathy. Oh, Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. Uh, and I'm here in front of the camera all in the name of boxing, so I hope you guys can appreciate it. <laughs> now let's get to the good bit, shall we, and what we are all here for. It's been a really good few weeks of boxing, but more notably, I'm going to be talking about my standout fights. Hopi Price versus Zahid Hussain, Maxi Hughes versus Giovanni Strafford, Kid Galahad versus Jazza Dickens, and of course, Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk. Now I will apologise in advance. DAZN always stings me with copyright, as well as Sky Sports with AJ Copyright, so I'm not sure how much footage I can actually put in, but we're going to give it a try as best we can. Starting with Hopi Price. Now this fight made me so, so happy for Hopi. He got quite a bit of stick online after his first few fights, with many people mainly picking on the fact that he's young. And when you turn over at 18, of course you're going to look aesthetically different to the older men that you're fighting. That's kind of it's what happens when you age, isn't it? I didn't really feel like the stick was justified. However, after this last performance from Hopi, <sighs> I feel like a proud mum, you know. We're really watching him develop into a fantastic young fighter before our eyes. He's becoming more and more aggressive, confident, accurate and mature in his craft. And that's a really, really beautiful thing to watch unfold. Dave Caldwell is doing a really, really brilliant job with him. It was Price's first 10 rounder and Hussein was a really great challenge for him. Price landed a stinging right hook that dropped Hussein, legs crumbled underneath him, but luckily for Hussein though, he was saved by the bell. He was really, really wobbled by that hook. His corner bought him a few more valuable seconds by, you know, being a little bit slow to get the gum shield in, get the chair out, but when you're in that position, you, you do everything you can do to get your fighter that recovery time that he, he needed. A clash of heads in the second cut both fighters, and that seemed to be the theme of the night. Poor Lara. Price was really letting his hands go. Really, really lovely work from Price. He shoots the left hand through, knocking Hussein back to the canvas, and well, this is how it ended. Take a look at this. Hopi Price took home the IBO International Super Bantamweight title in his home city of Leeds. Maxi Hughes, oh, what a guy, without a doubt single-handedly made the Josh Warrington card. And I think it's safe to say everybody's favourite fight of the night. Hughes was just brilliant. He was quick, he was snappy, he was heavy with his hands, quick with his head and footwork, and he had excellent, excellent rhythm. I think I am, um, I think I actually might have put myself forward for the uh, position of head member of the I Love Maxi Hughes club, if anybody wants to join me. <laughs> he beat Straff on to the punch, Every single time we saw some beautiful work from Hughes in the fifth after wobbling strap on with a heavy left hook and Hughes intensifies the pressure and he really, really steps it up. Look how seamless this is. Incredible round for Hughes in the fifth. Strap on really in a lot of trouble through that round, but you know what? How he didn't go down, I just, I do not know. He's a very, very tough fighter. The same pace from Hughes continues throughout the next six rounds. Strap on was just... He was outboxed. He left himself open to Hughes's counters. He was falling over his feet. He was fatigued. And it's a shame because we know how good a fighter he is and how dangerous he can be. Maxi Hughes won by a large margin of 120 to 117 and 119 to 109, taking home the IBO lightweight title. Fantastic, fantastic work from Hughes. Incredible. And I'm so, so happy for him. And to top it off, Matchroom signed him. So overall, pretty decent Saturday night for him. Throwing it back to August, Kid Galahad versus Jazza Dickens. Eight years on from their first fight, almost 400 rounds between them, the two finally met again for the IBF World Featherweight title. Now I'm not gonna go in round by round, I'm just gonna stick to the juicy bits. This was an incredibly exciting fight, kick-started by Dickens' incredibly pressurizing fast pace. A clash of heads cuts Dickens above the eye, which is, is never a good sign, especially so early on, because if it was me, I'd be like, keep jamming at that eye, get the stoppage. Second, third and fourth round, we see Galahad occupying Dickens a lot more, constantly throwing his jab, Galahad taking these rounds with ease. Dickens just isn't doing enough to edge him up on the scorecards. We did, however, see some lovely movement from Dickens in the fourth. 
I would have liked to have seen him counter a little bit more, you know, really dig his heels in and give it some aggression and put himself back onto the playing field. Into the fifth, we do see some of this aggression come out in Dickens. He is giving it back. However, it's just not enough because Galahad is just tunnel vision. He's snapping the jab. He's following up with a right uppercut hook. It's really, really lovely work from Galahad the whole way through this fight, actually. He's very much the aggressor. For me, he's controlling the pace, the center, and he's landing the majority of the time. At this point in the fight, Galahad has thrown 243 jabs alone and landed 47. Dickens has thrown 91 and landed 12, so they're two very big margins. By the sixth round, it's getting really tough for Dickens. He's got noticeable swelling to the face, blood pouring from his nose, and he seems to be slowing down quite a bit too, leaving himself open to Galahad. It actually really wasn't very nice to watch. Dickens' face just looked a mess. Galahad is a machine though. He never looks hurt, he never looks phased, he never looks tired. Even when he was caught in the seventh, I just, he's such a world-class level fighter. Eighth round, Galahad is, is going back to his boxing. He's working the jab, he's working the body. You know what they say, work the body, the rest will follow. And that's something he took into the ninth too. He just, he kept on his jab. Statistics by the ninth is Galahad has thrown 729 punches, landed 188, and Dickens has thrown 330 and landed 75. Galahad is so dominant and he does doesn't really look like there's a scratch on him in comparison to Dickens. A hard right hand from Dickens made Galahad, you know, sit up a little bit and he's reacted with a solid one-two and then straight to the body. His shot selection was just top tier, it was incredible. He kept complete control, very composed and a very confident performance. He gave Dickens no rest and Jazza Dickens, just what a tough, tough fighter. It did start to feel like an unnecessary beating by the 11th but I would imagine his corner would have pulled him sooner, but it was, it was probably his last opportunity to get a world title shot, so they let him fight on as much as he could, and, you know, he delivered on that. He stayed on his feet, he gave Galahad answers, but unfortunately, he lost to the better man on the night. Jezza Dickens' corner pulled him before the 12th after a relentless attack from Galahad for 11 rounds. His face was incredibly swollen, his left eye cut and closed, he was bruised, he was battered, and it... It's, it's hard to watch when a fight gets like that, but in his corner did the right thing. A beautiful sign of respect from both fighters embracing each other after the bell. A world-class level fight and just incredible work from Kid Galahad. Really, really take my hat off to him. And last but not least, Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk. Whew, now, if you don't know the outcome of this fight, do you live in a cave? I was actually really shocked to see how many people were doubting Usyk's ability and if he would be able to even withstand AJ after coming up from a lighter division, which I just thought was madness. Do you not know this guy's credentials? And in the same breath, so many boxing fans discrediting AJ's entire boxing career because of the result. And I, I honestly believe that people that are ripping to fighters after a loss, you just you can't be real fight fans. Like, how can you be? Anyway. This was never gonna be an easy fight for either fighters. AJ has this beautiful, natural, heavy ability to just walk through his opponents under pressure. You look, like, remember, AJ's had, what, 26 fights now with 22 knockouts. He is an immensely powerful athlete. Usyk is slick, he's neat, he's powerful, and he has an incredibly high boxing IQ. Now, I already know I won't be able to use any footage from this fight without being blocked, so if you wanna take a minute to put on some highlights, please do so. You can kind of follow along. So I've seen a lot of people slating AJ for his ring walk saying, you know, it was kind of a bit of what a pop star would do, but I'm not being funny. <laughs> 70,000 people were in Wembley for him. You know, let the man greet people, let him enjoy his time. It's not all doom and gloom, like you only live once. It's entertainment after all, and he is basically the crown jewels of UK boxing. First round, both fighters leaving that lead hand out there, kind of pouring each other, finding the distance. It felt really rigid, a bit stiff, nothing really spectacular. Uh, Usyk closing the decision from early. And as Macklin said, Usyk winning the battle of the backhands, winning that round. Second round, I feel like we saw a lot of AJ just leaving his jab out there. To me, it seems like a much slower pace than we're normally used to seeing AJ fight. We're not seeing that snappy jab. We're not seeing that quick counter movement. Some good right hands from Usyk. He's constantly moving, constantly putting the pressure on. Usyk is, you know, he is the lighter fighter, but he is the quicker man. And he is using that to the best of his ability. A beautiful sharp left right lands onto the face of Joshua. And Usyk really demonstrating how quick he can be in comparison to Joshua's slower pace. 
You know what, aside from the boxing for a second, Sky Sports boxing commentary gets a lot of stick. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. However, what I will say is that Adam Smith gives you so much information about both fighters in such a short space of time. I always feel like I'm in a little history lesson and I absolutely love that. I find it so personal when you know things about a fighter, um, you know, where they grew up, the hardships they've had in their life, what they've overcome and you know it's it's a really really nice touch that i don't think a lot of people actually appreciate uh we, we don't really see it anywhere else i anyway, know back to the boxing start of round four aj's not really looking his best self he was sent off balance by the right hand which makes him take a stumble backwards again we're seeing a lot of fates from aj and it doesn't look like he knows how to deal with Usyk. he's trying to work him out and i, I do feel like by the fourth round you should you should have worked him out and I feel like we're watching the same round over and over and over again. It's not really anything remarkable to talk about. Fifth round, however, things have stepped up a little bit. Much, much better responses from AJ in this round. Usyk still working him hard, landing those lovely over right hands. Into the sixth, AJ seems to have finally figured out Usyk's rhythm. But this man is just next level. He is the elite of the elite. He's firing hard jabs down the middle and AJ's finally got his jab going, which is key to stopping Usyk getting on the inside, which made it a bit of a stickier round for Usyk as AJ's confidence grew. And I feel like, is that a fair assessment to make? Nearing the mid end of the seventh, AJ lands a heavy left hook to the head, answered back by what looks like a harder left hook from Usyk, making AJ stumble back once again, maybe for the third time so far of the fight, whereas AJ hasn't really done anything to make Usyk pay in the same way, you know? Usyk was just all over him and another blinding jab down the middle sends AJ back for the fourth time. You know, for a man that was constantly given, oh, he's a lighter fighter in the chat to the run-up of this fight, he's looking like the stronger fighter. Going into this later round, Usyk is the busier fighter. He's still landing hard left, still bouncing on his toes, whereas if you look at the difference between his feet and Joshua's feet, Josh was very planted and solid. Josh was answering Usyk back with body shots and he's really starting to work his way forward, which is where a lot of us feel like he should have stayed. Push forward. What what was it that Chisora said? Go through him like a laxative. There you go. AJ is just, he's brilliant when he gets up close and personal and walks through his opponents. Towards the end of the 10th is where it's really, really hotting up. Usyk's badly cut. Josh was badly swollen on his right eye. Both fighters working well in the last minute. AJ's moving beautifully forward, actually. Uh, he threw a right uppercut that didn't land. Dodge took two steps forward, backing Usyk up on the ropes. Heavy left hooks from Usyk at the end of the 10th, though. Into the 11th, Usyk shows no signs of slowing down. He is all over Joshua. By this point, Joshua's legs seem tired. Uh, he's not really chasing Usyk about anymore. He's letting him come to him. Uh, he looks as if he's trying to protect that right eye as much as he can. He's not stepping forward with his right anymore. And again, we're not seeing that snap from his jab. Usyk comes forward with four jabs. So he's throwing a jab, he's stepping in, throwing a jab, stepping in. In result, moving Joshua back. Really, really lovely movement there from Usyk. The final round, it was pretty clear watching it. For AJ to win, he needed that knockout. Usyk starts with a beautiful combination. AJ just isn't giving him any answers for it. It was really, really frustrating to see. Usyk started with a right, left, right hook, a solid jab, right, right, left hook, quick, sharp and punishing. Macklin made a really good point of that AJ seems like he's struggling to actually find a target on Usyk because of his head movement. Usyk's just a very busy fighter and he's excellent at his craft. He finished the round very strongly, backing Joshua up on the ropes with a multitude of left hook, right hook, left hook, right uppercut, left hook, and repeat. It was incredible scenes. What a way to finish a fight. And I do feel like that round ended ever so slightly early by like a minuscule of like 0.6 of a second, because I timed it, I'm sad. <laughs> Instantly, Usyk has fallen to his knees. He knows he's done more than enough to win that fight. And it was a first class boxing performance, competitive, intelligent, incredible performance. He started strong and he finished stronger. How do you guys see the rematch going and what do you want to see AJ do differently to win? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you on the next episode with hopefully no copyright strikes.